looks may be children's toys, but they make really cute block families. And hey, you can make your own family. But today, I'm gonna have a bit of fun and make a monster family. Now, the first thing to do is to sand your blocks back. This is really important so the paint goes on smoothly. For this project, you're gonna need wooden blocks. These can be pre-cut at the hardware store, paint, paint brushes or paint sponge sticks, and sandpaper. When sanding your blocks, you do need to be careful. Grab an adult to help. Now we're going to paint our block family. Now you don't need to paint the middles, but you do need to paint the sides. And think of it like this. This top side, this is my green character. And this side, it's my red character. So let's get painting. I'm going to start with green, a great monster skin colour. Now I'm going to paint two coats of my base colour to get a really even finish. Now just go really slowly on the edges so you don't spill the paint onto the other side. Last but not least, the blue side. Okay, that's all done. Now let's put it down to dry on its unpainted side and we'll do it again to the other three. Now they're all nice and dry, it's time to add on some detail. I've got a little tip for you. It might be a bit scary trying to draw a perfect circle, so I got some round sponges. So you just dip it in your red paint, splotch it on, wait for it to dry, and then do the same again with a smaller sponge for the eyeball. It was the same idea here for the claws. I just splotched on two yellow circles, waited for it to dry, and filled it in. And this one, I just did freehand. So just get really creative with all your shapes. This is a head and I'm going to give it three eyeballs. Now we're going to paint the mouth on. I'm just using the very edge of my paint sponge to give me a straight line. And now we're just going to fill it in. Actually, I'm going to turn his torso into a tail. So I'm going to paint with both blocks at the same time so they match up. I'm going to just start with a long line and work it down and around into the little tail point. Ready dip and do the other side. Come in and then back out to the tail. And then start painting your way in. Oh, okay, I just made a mistake, but I think I can fix it. So now I'm just gonna make a little eye mask for my monster. And when it dries, you can add in the eyes. Mistake fixed. Okay, now it's totally dry, it's time to add in some black and white detail. Now I find it hard doing small detail with a paintbrush, so I'm using a paint marker, but you can use a permanent marker. So I'm just going to use my black paint marker to draw in some eyeballs. And now I'm going to use my white marker to draw in some teeth. It's really just a couple of straight lines spaced evenly apart. Now time for his body. I'm just going to draw some lines across his tummy. All right, and here is my mermaid three-eyed monster. And as you can see here, the possibilities are endless. So go and get creative. Over a few episodes, we've been making this little guy out of clay. He's a phone holder that also acts as a speaker for your music. Okay guys, we're up to the final stage of our amazing clay creature. It's time to get it painted. So what we're gonna need is some acrylic paints, any color you want your creature to be, some primer, something to mix your paints in, paint brushes, and some water to clean it all up. Let's get started. We're gonna start with a primer. So just put a bit of water on your brush. This is just gonna give a nice even coat over the whole creature so the paint absorbs evenly and all the colours stay nice and bright. And the good thing about this is it dries so quickly so we don't have to wait very long to get painting. Just be careful when you're doing the area around the legs, they can be a bit fragile. So the primer's done and now we're ready to choose our colour. Now I think I might make my creature orange to start with. So a nice bright base colour. So I'm going to get some yellow, I'm going to get some red, I'm going to mix them together, create an orange. And now we're ready to do the base coat on our creature. Now we just want to do a nice even coat. 
over the body and the scales. So this is gonna make up the creature's skin. This is one of my favorite parts of the creature because it's a foundation and you build on this. So if you do a good first layer, it really helps the creature come to life. So basically I'm gonna paint everything orange except for the tongue, the eyeballs and the lips. And don't worry if you run out of paint, you can always mix some more as you go along. Okay, so I'm making sure I get in all the little holes and dents to make sure there's no white showing on my creature. And remember just to be gentle around the legs because they're very delicate. And now we're just gonna paint the inside of the mouth, orange as well. Don't worry if you get any on the tongue because we can paint over that later. Okay, first coat is done. I haven't colored the eyes, the lips or the tongue. I'm gonna make them different colors. But before you put another color on the orange, we're gonna set that aside and let that dry. 10 minutes. So I'm halfway through my second coat now. And as you can see, it's just covering up all that white and it's really making that orange pop. I'm gonna let this dry for 10 minutes and then move on to the detail. Next step, we're gonna make a wash. Now that's just a watered down color. That's gonna go into the cracks and make them look deeper. I'm gonna add some black to that to make it a little bit darker. So we get some real depth. Make it nice and watery. Just a nice even coat over the whole thing. And I'm just gonna do another coat of the washed out color on the inside as well. All right, I'm gonna repeat that last step, do another wash, but this time I might do gold. So I just pour a little bit into this palette and then add some water and just a nice even coat over the whole creature. And nice and watery. As you can see, just like before, it's gonna fall into those cracks, but this time it's gonna make it nice and shiny. Now this part's a little bit messy because of the water, so just make sure you're wearing old clothes and cover any surfaces that can't get dirty. So everything's dry now, I'm just gonna put my hand in there and then I can turn it around and paint the lips. Got more control. So for the lips, I think I might use a, a bright pink color. Now it looks a bit thin, but you'll need a couple of coats on the lips to get the color nice and thick. Now we've done the first coat of the lips, we'll let them dry. Now we'll move on to the tongue. I might do that blue. And again, you see those white streaks, but they'll all be covered when we put the second coat on. And remember, you can paint your creature any colour you like. And because it's a wacky creature, I might do blue eyes as well. But I might leave the pupil in the middle and do that another colour. Because this is a small part, you just got to be really careful and remember, use the small brush. Okay, so I'm going to do the second coat on the tongue and the eyes, but this time I might make it a bit of a lighter blue, add some white to it. And I've accidentally got a little bit of blue on the lips, but that doesn't matter because we're doing a second coat. You can always paint over any mistakes. Do one more coat on the lips. Last bit of the creature is just the pupils, these white bits here. I think I'm gonna paint them gold. All right, finish the painting, put it aside, let it dry for 10 minutes. And it's ready to put your phone in and start playing music. One of the things that I love about art is that it can come in all different shapes and sizes. The possibilities are endless and today's project is no exception. I'm going to show you how to make a fun 3D artwork inspired by our feathered friends that you can hang on your wall. Let's go make it. So you'll need a hot glue gun, paint or ink, water, paint brushes, scissors, a pencil, canvas, or cardboard and watercolour paper. So our first step is to start drawing our feathers. We're gonna do about three different sizes. Grab your pencil and draw three different size feathers along the edge of your paper. 
So just repeat that shape, depending on how wide your piece of paper is. Accordion fold the paper and cut carefully. You might need an adult to help you here. Just be careful of your fingers, so take your time. So you end up with small feathers, medium and large. Get a little pile like that, roughly line them up, do some little snips going downwards towards the stem. I know it's a lot of work, but it's worth it in the end because you'll have loads of feathers for your artwork. Grab your canvas or piece of card and just put a little dot at your midpoint. And that is going to be the guide from where we start to build our artworks. So we'll start from the middle and we'll work our way out. I'm going to grab my hot glue gun, put a tiny bit of glue on the stem of your feather and then using your little dot that you've just drawn, stick the feather on with the stem pointing towards the dot. So just think uh, as you're building your artwork, just make sure that the stems are always pointing towards the centre and the rounder bit always faces out. See how there's these gaps here? That's going to be my guide to stick my next feather. Now we're ready for the next size feather. So as you get to the edge of your canvas, it's really good if you just let the feathers overlap the edge a little bit. Grab our biggest size. Okay, so we filled our canvas with all of our feathers. The next step is to add some colour. I've just got a bit of water, a bit of paint. And there's not really a great technique to this. You just go like that. What we're going to do now is the last step for the painting. Grab another brush and we're going to paint into the corners of our feathers and that's going to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional, sort of bring our artwork to life. It helps to create the illusion of a shadow. I'm not painting the whole feather, I'm just kind of going into the little cracks in between. Lifting and painting underneath them to bring them forward a bit. Great, I think I'm done. And there you have it, our beautiful feathered artwork. I uh, started off uh, at a very young age. I really uh, loved painting pictures. From there, my parents could see that I wanted to do that, and so they encouraged me to go to college in Perth and Western Australia, which I did. Which brought me to Sheffield, town of murals. There are other mural artists here in town as well, which uh, we work alongside and collaborate with. When I was younger, I got really encouraged because I won a competition, a painting competition, uh, with a bunch of daffodils and from that point onwards I had the encouragement and the uh, drive and desire to uh, better myself as an artist and so that's what I decided to do. Well I happened to uh, decide to come to Sheffield to live and I had a studio workshop here and of course then I was commissioned to paint murals and so painting on the larger scale is a lot, a lot more fun than to paint small pictures, it's more, uh, more fun painting big ones. Put a lot more into it, more colourful, plus two people get to see your work. Yeah, it has all those aspects that make um, painting murals really fun.
Often these large murals, being out in the weather, need to be touched up. So every 10 to 15 years, uh, they have a makeover. This mural here portrays the original bakery, which is on the side of the building. What better way to portray history uh, rather than in words, but also, but also in pictures. So it's going to be a great deal of fun, this mural, because the people who own the uh, motel are all pictured in it. So I took the uh, people out of the um, business and put them in the old bakery. So that, that gave them a bit of a chuckle. So uh, it's also fun. a lot of inspiration from the history and it's amazing what comes up. There's even now there's interesting history about the place which I didn't even know after 20 years so we're looking at producing even more murals to reflect the history of the town. Well, when I was a teenager you go through all the troubled parts of your life and uh, sometimes it's very difficult to, difficult to express yourself as a young person and so uh, with art it's a really good way of being able to express yourself emotionally as well as a person. collaborated with different people in the past, different artists and also uh, younger people to encourage them to uh, take on art as a career, uh, to get them past the nervous stage of um, being apprehensive about painting, especially in the public. It's good to see people uh, losing the nerves and pick up the paintbrush. Well, I'd encourage all kids to take up art because the thing about it is, is that they're young, they're full of uh, energy and enthusiasm and often that's a really good thing when it comes down to painting, to have confidence. They learn the skills when they're very, very young. The good thing about that is, is that as they get older, they have the skills to actually express themselves. And as their skills levels increases, then that's when the enjoyment in painting comes in. My name is Delara and I won the Young Artist 2016 for the 16 to 18 year old category. I painted my dad and I chose to paint him because he's an inspiration in my life. He's always there for me no matter what I'm doing. He's supporting me up front with his big camera, taking pictures, cheering really loudly. So this is my way of saying thank you. When it was finished, he, he was really happy. I think he cried a bit. I don't think I should tell anyone that, but I think he cried a bit. He saw that it looked like him and that I captured him in his essence properly. Very serious face, but caring, gentle eyes. I did this painting in acrylic paint and initially I wanted to work off a live model but he doesn't sit still for very long and he was very fidgety so I couldn't get a proper angle so then I decided to work off a picture I'd blown up really close to his face. I like to just do a quick outline to know where all the features are so like his eye wouldn't end up here and his glasses wouldn't be here. When I started, I started about three months early. I finished this eye and then I stopped it. I left it because I just couldn't keep going. I thought, it's not gonna work out, it's not gonna happen. Then my mum sat me down. She's like, you need to finish this, you need to hand something in. This painting took me roughly a day to paint. Um, and I like to paint with noise. I can't work in complete silence. I don't like that. I feel alone and isolated. I need noise and something lively happening. And I feel like that comes through in the paintings as well. Last year I entered and it was of my mum and it was so bad, I, I can say that now, it was really, really bad. And not getting chosen as a finalist, that kind of motivated me to try again, actually give it a proper go and hand something in. I always thought I could do art as a hobby, as something after my job. Getting chosen as a finalist, it kind of helped me decide, yes, I can do this. This can actually be something that people like seeing my painting, seeing my artwork and my art making. Out of so many candidates, that's just such an achievement and it helped validate my want to be an artist, that this is something that I can do as a career in the future. 
When I found out I was a finalist, it was just sheer disbelief. I was like, wow, I could not believe it. Because this is one of the biggest art prizes for our age. And to be hanging up on the gallery walls at 18 years old, I just, it's amazing.